Family Theater presents Joan Leslie and Jerry Colonna. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Night Caller, starring Joan Leslie. And now, here is your host, Jerry Colonna. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Night Caller, starring Joan Leslie as Nora. sleep. Maybe it was the bright moonlight coming in through my window since the storm ended. Maybe it was just because I was all alone. Whatever the reason, I was still wide awake at 2.30. I got out of bed and went over to the window. Below me, far across the valley, the last of the storm clouds drifted quietly against a clear night sky. I could see some stars. I looked down the dark, winding driveway that led from the house to the road along the edge of the bluff. The motionless trees, the shaded surface of the mountainside, the white ribbon of highway, all seemed deserted and very distant. I looked again at the luminous dial of the clock on my night table. 2.30 in Los Angeles. That would make it 4.30 in Chicago. I wished I could pick up the phone and dial long distance. Hello, Mom. Hello, Dad. It turns out your daughter's not a big girl after all. She's sleeping in your bedroom, but she's still afraid of the dark. Would you mind singing her to sleep? Pick up the phone. I did get that far, just to see how it felt. But then I decided I should stop feeling sorry for myself. And not two seconds later, I saw the light flash on my ceiling. It was a car, slowly making its way up the driveway. I watched it pull up to the house and stop. A man got out. I'd never seen him or the car before. Maybe he was lost and wanted to use the phone. Well, I didn't care. I wasn't going to let him in. I slipped into my bathrobe and started up the hall toward the vestibule. There wasn't a light on anywhere in the house. He'd think it was empty and go away. That's all he could do. When I got to the end of the hall, I stopped and peeked into the vestibule. Through one of the glass panels at the side of the front door, I could see him standing on the porch. I waited, expecting him to turn away and get back into his car. But instead, he did something that made my blood freeze. What do you want? What? Who are you? What do you mean breaking in Shut here? Shut up. Where are the lights? Get out! Shut up! Don't, don't you come near me. Where's the light switch? Ah. What do you want? I thought this place was empty. No, no, my, my parents are, are right in there. They must be pretty heavy sleepers. You get out before I, I call the police. You're all alone, aren't you? Look... Look, I've got some money, about $30. You can have it. Has anyone else been here tonight? No, no. Listen, I'll give you the money. Take anything else you want. I I promise I won't call the police. Where's the phone? The phone? You heard me. In the bedroom. Show me. There. You want to stay out of trouble, keep your mouth shut. Hello? Who's calling? Yeah. Yeah, it's me. Now, they've left already, huh? Well, that's not very smart. What if somebody else sees it from the highway? Okay, he's the boss. Yeah, I'll turn it on. Ah, I went off like clockwork. 
Yeah. Good enough. So long. Who was that? A friend of mine. Uh, where do you turn on the porch light? Back in the vestibule? But how did anyone know to call you here? Because I told him to. At the switch by the front door? Yes. Look, what is this? How come this? you didn't what? go to Chicago with your folks? Well, I changed my... Who, who told you they were in Chicago? A friend of mine. Who are you? What's this all about? Never mind what it's all about. Turn on that porch light. Aren't those headlights coming up the driveway? Yeah. And don't look so hopeful. They're friends of mine, too. Uh, where's that door lead? To the den. Huh? Inside. What are you going to do? Stop asking so many questions and get in there. From inside the den, I could imagine him crossing the vestibule and opening the front door. I remember looking around the room and trying to decide whether I'd have a chance if I climbed out the window and made a run for it. But before I could make up my mind... Come out here. But come I, on, I come on. Oh, you shouldn't let her see What's us. What's the difference? She'll never see us again. What do you want? How long are your parents going to be out of town? I, I don't know. Come on, we aren't fooling. Well, I don't know. Until the weekend, anyhow. You got any relatives in L.A.? No. We just moved out from the Midwest last spring. You work? What's this all about? Answer him. Where do you work? The London Film Company in Hollywood. I'm an illustrator. I better have her call in there in the morning, say she's sick. Call in? Yeah. You're going to have guests for the next few days. You can't stay here. Well, sure we can, honey. It'll be nice and cozy. But why here? Because we like it here. Because it's quiet. Not many people come around. You know, I'm beginning to wonder about this. What? Maybe we ought to clear out right now. Well, forget it, kid. You're hot. Your picture will be all over the front page. Ah, that was five years ago. I've lost a lot of weight. Shaved the mustache. Besides, we got to wait here for Frank. Well, he could catch up to us. He knows the place. Will you cool down? That dough's not going to run away. Well, which is it? We stay, we go. We stay. Through tomorrow, anyway. How you fixed for groceries, lady? Well, it's, it's not much. Well, whatever. May, take her out in the kitchen, see what you can rustle up, huh? Come on, honey. You want a hand getting your stuff out of the car? Yeah, might as well bring it in. Boy, I'm starving. Hmm. Cute kitchen. I'm glad you like it. Don't be rude, honey. Don't be rude. Well, let's see what the icebox has to offer. Hmm. Cold chicken. The police are after you, aren't they? Not us, dear, just Clint. What did he do? Here, take the milk. He sprung himself. He what? He sprung himself, went over the wall. This all the butter you got? Yes. You mean he escaped from jail? That's what I mean. Oh. Where do you keep the bread? Oh, right over here. Get some plates, huh? All right. Oh, and stop being so nervous. Nobody's going to eat you. But why did you come here? Well, we heard it was going to be empty for a few days. Who told you that? We just heard. How about putting on some coffee? What was he in jail for? Armed robbery, five to ten. He's younger than I expected. <laughs> kind of cute, too. I, I thought you were good friends. We are now. Salt and pepper. Uh, on that shelf over the stove. You don't even know this man. And you helped him to break out of jail? We didn't help him. He did that all by himself. But you're helping him to get away. We've got our reasons, honey. How's the grub coming? Ah, it won't be long. Where's Clint? He's putting the car away. How are you getting along with uh, our hostess? All right. Been shooting your mouth off? I didn't tell her anything she won't hear on the radio. Who says she's going to listen to the radio? What'd she tell you? Nothing, not a thing. Come on. I'll leave her alone. He already said his picture'd be in the paper and about the dough. Anyone could figure he's on the run. Is that all she told you? Well, that's all, really. All right, then you know we aren't fooling around. Yes, I know. Don't you forget it. <gasps> What's that? That's Clint at the back door. Let him in. Mm. Thanks. It's getting cold out. Get the car in, all right? Yeah. All right, come on, sit down. Let's eat, huh? Got a lot of planning to do. In front of her? Later, you think I'm nuts or something? Eh. Oh, May, we're gonna have to lock you two girls up in the bedroom tonight. What am I, a watchdog? Don't give me any lip. That's what you're gonna do. Come on, pass the chicken. I'm starved. I sat there 
watching them eat. Clint let the others do most of the talking. Once or twice I realized he was looking at me, puzzled. But he didn't say anything. After May and I had finished the dishes, Clint and the other men locked us up for the night in my parents' bedroom. It was starting to get light when May sat down in the rocker next to the phone stand. I lay in bed watching her, pretending to drop off. The first time her eyes closed, it was only for a few moments. The next time, a little longer. I waited. It had to look right. By 6.35, she'd been asleep for almost ten minutes. I got out of bed and, as quietly as I could, tiptoed over to the phone stand and lifted the receiver from the hook. May stirred in her sleep. I stood there, inches from her. Then she began to breathe evenly again. Hello? Hello? Is this the police? What are you... Is this the police? Put down that phone! Police! Hey, what's going on? Just trying to call the cops! All right, May, hang that thing up and put it back on the table. Uh, I thought you were going to behave uh, yourself. Well, you thought wrong. You fell asleep, huh? Ah, uh, just for a minute. A minute's all she needed. Well, how come you didn't tell us the phone was in here? I forgot about That's it. That's a nice thing to forget. Don't make me any speeches. I forgot it. That's all, all right. Take it easy, kid. Don't get excited. I'm plenty excited. I tell you, we ought to get out of here. As soon as Frank shows. What's so big with you and Frank? I'm the guy who has to do all the work on He's this. He's your buddy, Clint. He stopped being my buddy when he sold half this mark to you. Well, you needed the dough. It's what got you loose. All right. So now I'm loose. What do we need with All him? Right, wait a minute, wait a minute. You think this is smart talk in front of the little lady? There's no dumb man sticking around here while the cops chase that call she just made. I don't think she got through to the cops. Why not? Well, when I hung up the receiver, the number was still ringing. She probably got disconnected and you heard the dial tone. I know the dial tone. This was a number ringing. And who was she talking to? Ask her. Oh, sure, that'll do Now, wait it. a minute, Clint. Even if she got the cops, they'd call back. They don't come running every time a phone rings. All right. Well, what if they come running this time? Then she'll answer the door, and she'll tell them it's all a mistake. Oh, that's brilliant. Look at kid. I got 15 grand tied up in this mark. I'm not going anywhere until the guy I paid it to shows up. Use your head. Frank's no good to you from now on. You already know the bank, don't you? Shut up, will you? Well, that and my signature's hey, all you you're need. you're talking too much. All right. I'm through talking. Wait for Frank as long as you want. I'm getting out of here. You're not going nowhere, Clint. That right away. Yeah. When I'm ready. You chump. If that goes off pointed at me, you wind up with 50% of the. I'll nothing. worry about that when Frank gets You're here. You're gonna be sorry for this. I'd rather be sorry than be double crossed. Put your hands up. All right, get out in the hall. You too, lady. What are you going to do? You'll see when I do it. Oh, honey, you promise no rough Just stuff. Gonna lock him up in the den a while. Is that rough stuff? What's the matter with you? Go on, get in there, the both of you. I'm not going to forget this, mister. I'll give you something else not to forget. This thing is loaded, and I'll be watching the back of the house, and I don't get any ideas about climbing out that window. <laughs> Make yourselves comfortable. Even though the window in the den faced west, there was enough gray early morning light coming through it for me to make out Clint's face. He slumped down in the chair by the window, staring out at the mountains. After a while, he turned and looked at me. Come over here, will you? I won't hurt you. Come over here by the window. What is it? Keep your voice down. They might be listening. Uh, well? I've been trying to think of a way to get you out of here. Get me out of here? That's right. I'll give it to you all at once. I'm not an escaped convict. I'm a policeman. A policeman? Keep your voice down. What do you take me for? I take you for a girl who's going to be awfully sorry when that guy Frank shows up and finds out I'm not Clint Sanders. But May and that man she's with Ward. think... Ward. Remember his name. Jerry Ward. They've never met Clint. They think I'm him because I said so and showed up at the right time. Well, I don't believe you. Why would I lie? Well, to save yourself. From what? You? I want you to get to the police as a witness. Both of us can't make it. 
You're not Sanders. Where is he? In the infirmary at the state penitentiary. He was shot last night trying to break out. He talked. Oh. A lot. That's why I took his place. Oh, talked about what? A uh, bank job. A thing he went to prison for. They never recovered the money. Almost a hundred thousand. And they never tagged the brains behind it either. Who would that be? Frank? Well, we think so, but we can't make it stick without the money. But you told me and uh, Ward that you knew where the money was. I told them they knew where the money was. It was just a hunch, but they took the bait. I figured Frank oh. must have told them something for their 15000 Have you any idea where it is? Yeah, safety deposit box in Mexico, northern Mexico. That's all Clint did tell us. Then you, you really want to help me escape? Yeah. And I think we can swing it. Now? Here. These are the keys to Ward's car. So far, he's forgotten he didn't get them back. Why don't I use your car? It's in the garage. Because it won't move. I took the plugs out. I didn't want anyone chasing you. Besides, Ward's is the one I want the police to get. It's evidence. Probably got his prints all over it. All right. But how do I get to the garage? Well, I'll climb out this window and make a run for it toward the bluff. Oh, but Ward said he'd be watching the back. Well, that's the idea. While he's busy trying to catch up with me, you'll have a clear field of the garage. What about me? Oh, I've got a hunch you'll stick with Ward once the excitement starts. Uh-huh. And you want me to go straight to the police? Fast as you can. Say, incidentally, you didn't happen to get through to them while you were on the phone, did you? No. Too bad. There's uh, something I should tell you about that phone call. It, it was just a trick, an idea I had. What do you mean, a trick? Well, when I heard you suggest I'd better call in to work this morning, I realized you hadn't guessed. Oh. Well, getting along fine, ain't you? What's it to you? Nothing. Just happen to remember you still got the keys to my car. Let's have them, huh? You want me to answer that, honey? Yeah, and if it's for the girl, tell them I got the wrong number. All right, let's have the keys. You must be getting soft in the head. I gave them to you when I came in from the garage. Oh, come on, wise guy. I tell you, I don't have them. Search me if you don't believe it. Look, I haven't got those keys, neither has me. Are you going to hand them over, or do I have to get rough? How can I hand them over if I don't have them? Because... Honey, that was Frank. Oh, yeah? Where's he called from? Down at the gas station. He's on his way over here now. Good. All right, wise guy, all right. We'll forget about the keys until we see what Frank's got to say about you. Honey. Huh? Yeah, ask me to remind oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, lady, what's the name of your boss down where you work? Mr. Harper. Charles Harper. Okay. All right, come on, both of you. I'm going to make a little phone call. Don't tell me you're going to put her on the telephone. That's right. Oh, brilliant. What if she starts yelling again? She won't. What's the address of that place? London Film Company on Melrose. London Film. All right, look up the number, Melrose. Oh, you think okay. you're off your rocket? Shut up, will you? Come on, mate. Come on, come on. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. London Film. Yeah, huh. all right, here. let me. See? Hollywood 2. Huh? Yeah. All right, listen, lady. Here's the deal. Last night, you twisted your ankle, see? Nothing serious, but it's gonna keep you off your feet for a few days. Reason you know it's nothing serious, because I'm a doctor and I told you. Just like I'm gonna tell your boss, Harper, before you talk to him. You savvy? Yes. All right. When you get on the line, you just make some small talk with him, see? But don't get no smart ideas. I won't. Okay. Oh, may I speak to Mr. Harper, please? Uh, Mr. Harper? Uh, this is Dr. Walter Barnes. I'm calling in for one of your employees, uh, Miss Walcott. Uh, no, 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 no. She just had a little accident last night. She turned her ankle. It's nothing serious, but I recommended that she keep her weight off it for a few days. Yeah. Yeah, well, she's right here. She wants to talk to you. Hold on, will you? Okay. Don't try anything funny. Hello? Mr. Harper? This... this is Nora. Can you hear me all right? There seems to be something wrong with the connection. Oh, oh by the way, I, I called my folks in Chicago last night, long distance. I... Uh, I, I it was kind of lonesome. I, I just wanted to hear their voices. What? Oh, yes, yes, I, I'm home. Uh, no, no, the doctor came over here. I called him. Yes. Well, thanks, Mr. Harper. 
Well, I'll take care of myself. Goodbye. Yeah, that was very convincing. You're getting smart. That's more than I can say for you. Shut up. Why don't you quit swinging that rod around and get wise to yourself? This deal can't even get off the ground without me. Listen, I want you to know one thing, it's buddy. It's Frank, honey. Well, let him in. Look, fella, Frank's gonna think you're punchy if he comes in here and sees you with that gun. He is, huh? Yeah. That kind of stuff makes him nervous. Give me that thing! No, you don't! Let go of that! Hey, Frank! Give it to me! No, you don't! Frank, take him, will you? What's going on here? Take him! He's trying to get the gun! Who is this guy? You! Get him up! Get, off get him up! Me. Who is this? Who is it? You don't know him? I never saw him before. Where's Clint? Yeah, I knew there was something phony about him. He said he was Clint. You boneheads, he's a plant. Who's she, his girl? No, she lives here. Where's Clint, copper? Where is he? Same place he's been for the last five I years. I knew something smelled about you. Yeah, you're a genius. Shut up, both of you. May you go out and start the car. What's the deal now? We're getting out of here, that's the deal, and these two with us. What about the job? There isn't any job without Clint, forget it. I'm not forgetting we gave you 15 grand. We'll settle that after we get out of here. Now straighten this joint up and get your stuff together. I want to be on the road in 10 minutes. I had no way of knowing if the phone call had worked, but at least I felt sure that none of them suspected anything. Frank walked us from room to room at gunpoint, while May and Ward went through the house gathering their things. It took longer than they expected. It was almost 9.30 when Frank herded us out through the front door. Still can't find your car keys? No, and I still think he's got them. We looked all over the house. Frisk him. You're wasting your time. It's our time. Frisk him. Nothing. How about her? I don't have them. Take a look, May. Well, who'd have thought it? Little Miss Tremblechin. I'm sorry. Forget it. Look, I'll make a deal with you guys. You got nothing to deal with. Sure I have. If you let her go, there's nothing we can tag you with. Are you kidding? Not even a little. Technically, the only thing against you so far is housebreaking, and we can forget that. But if you put her into that car, it's abduction. And that's the Lindbergh law. Get in the car. Now, wait a minute. Let me hear this. What about Clint? What about Clint? He's still in jail. You can't get in trouble for aiding and abetting an escaped convict. If he hasn't escaped. And where do you come in? Well, I go to the L.A. police and tell them who I am. A cop. And then say it didn't work. Nobody showed up here. Oh, are you kidding? What's to keep this girl from talking? Common sense. She wants to get out of this alive. Well, who says she won't? Ask your friend what he's got in mind for us. Frank, now wait a minute. Shut up, I'll do the thinking. You will not. We didn't put up no 15 grand to buy into a murder rap. You bought into a deal that's gone sour. And it's going to get worse if we turn this cop loose. He hasn't got a thing on us. What about the bank job? That was you and Clint. Right the first time. That's why there isn't going to be any deal. Maybe you're clean as a whistle, but I'm filthy. Now get in the car. We started down the driveway toward the road. I scanned the stretch of highway leading along the bluff. There wasn't a sign of anyone in either direction. I looked back at Ward's car following us down the hill. Then I felt May press the gun into my side, and I saw she was yelling at me. Turn around! What's the matter with you, Diff? Shut up back there. We take this road left. Where's it go, copper? Toward Sunland, I think. Well, that's as good as it. Hey, give me that gun. What's wrong? Look. I never saw anything so beautiful in my life. There was two squad cars, one on each side of the driveway, parked along the inner edge of the bluff. There wasn't a shot fired. And after Ward and Frank and poor May had been taken into custody, I couldn't resist. I had to tell someone. You know, May was right. Oh? What do you mean? <laughs> when she asked if I was deaf, that's just it. I am. I'm as deaf as a post. You know, I, I knew there was something. <laughs> I can read your lips, but I'm deaf. That's how my boss knew there was something fishy about the phone call. I never use the phone. I can't. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I beg your pardon? I don't mind. I'd rather talk to you in person, anyhow. <laughs> The 
this is Jerry Colonna again. Remember that children's story about the wolf and the three little pigs? One of the pigs built his house out of straw, one out of sticks, and one out of brick. Well, there are a few things about that story that have always bothered me. Know what I mean? No? Well, look at it this way. According to the author, the wolf huffed and puffed and blew two of the houses down. But try as he might, he just couldn't get into the brick house. Now, for me, that's where the story falls apart. Past that point, I just don't buy it. And you know why? Because the author makes no mention of any of the houses, including the brick, as having a foundation. So, I ask you, wouldn't a smart wolf, or for that matter, even a dumb one, have sense enough to undermine the house, to just dig his way in? See what I mean? You may wonder why I'm bringing all this up, and actually, it's just to make a point. Anybody knows that a house without a foundation isn't much of a stronghold. Well, it's the same with a home as it is with a house. Homes and families have to have something firm to stand on, too, if they're going to have any strength. And the only thing strong enough for a home is love. Love is every bit as important to the family as a stone or concrete foundation is to a house. That's why Family Theater recommends family prayer. You see, family prayer is an excellent way of bringing love into the home and keeping it there. When the members of a family gather together daily to sincerely thank God for his gifts and to acknowledge him as a participating member of the family, they are assuring themselves of his continued blessings and assuring themselves, too, that he will keep love in their home. Ten minutes a day devoted to family prayer can keep a home on a firm foundation. Try it. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Night Caller, starring Joan Leslie. Jerry Colonna was your host. Others in our cast were John Stevenson, Margaret Brayton, Lawrence Dobkin, and Frank Gerstel. The script was written and directed by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present A Dog's Life, starring Gene Lockhart. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. Music